Hi guys, Papa Mark here, and like I promised, we're going to make some delicious caramel corn today. This one's extra special, so stick with us and check it out. Okay, our bacon is done. Let's take it out. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so once your bacon comes out of the oven, you got to take it out of the pan really quick before it starts to cool. Otherwise, it's going to stick into one block. So, so um, once your bacon's ready, take it out of the oven. It looks dark, but it's not. That's because of the sugar. Um, you want to get it out before the sugar actually overcooks because then it'll give it a burn taste and you don't want that. Wait till the meat in the bacon, not the fat, the meat part looks like dark brick red. Then you know it's done. You're going to put it in the oven for about a half hour at 325 and you are going to turn it every 10 minutes. Word to the wise, must you must be extremely careful when working with hot candy or hot sugar. It's scalding hot, molten hot like lava. You get that on your hand, and it is going to burn you bad, and it's going to stick like melted plastic. So please be uber, uber careful when handling sugar. Same token, try not to get it on your stove or your counter, because it's a nightmare to get off once it hardens. So, that out of the way, I'm going to show you, we're going to take it out of the pan. I'm getting my old reliable cookie sheet here, my baking sheet, and I'm using my silicone baking sheet, because nothing sticks to that. We are going to go one piece at a time. Don't let them touch because they'll stick to each other. And lay them out. That looks amazing, doesn't it? It's, I wish you could smell it. Well, I wish you could taste it. I bet you wish you could taste it, too. Anyways, um, I'm going to put them all out here. Um, normally, our caramel sauce is made with butter. But I thought to be a little extra decadent today. We're going to use the butter, or excuse me, the fat and the sugar that's in this pan. This is actually bacon fat. Bacon fat won't go bad. It's like oil. This will give the caramel corn an extra bacony flavor. Oops. Make sure you don't have these touching each other. Like I said. There. And okay. We're going to save the bacon fat and the sugar that's in this pan because we're going to use it to make the actual caramel sauce. It should give it an extra level of yumminess when you use bacon fat. Okay, that's all set. So we're going to set this aside. Don't put it in a sunny window or anything. Put it somewhere where it's cool. Not cold, but cool. You want this to harden. It's it looks wet now, but trust me, it's caramel. It'll harden as it cools. Okay, we're going to make popcorn. Now, for all of you youngins out there, this is a stove. And this is a pan. Back in the day, when us dinosaurs didn't have microwaves, this is how we made popcorn. And quite frankly, I think it tastes better this way. That's just my opinion, but I'm the cook today, so we're going to do it this way. I don't have a lot of popcorn kernels. Shame on me, I ran out. So, I'm going to use about a teaspoon, maybe a regular teaspoon, not a cooking teaspoon, of oil. 
In this case, Crisco, shortening, whatever. Turn the burner on high. If you wanted to make plain old regular popcorn just to munch on in front of the movie, um, now would be a perfect time to put your salt in. It won't burn. You can go ahead and put the lid on it. Uh, let's really keep the heat in it. We'll make the shortening melt a little quicker. If you don't have shortening, uh, by all means, you can go ahead and use canola oil, sunflower oil, whatever. Don't use olive oil because it's too heavy and it, it gets too dark and it's, it's not good for frying. Bring it to high temp. Same token, don't use butter because the butter will burn by the time it gets hot enough to make the popcorn kernels pop. Okay, as you can see, it takes very little time for that to melt. Like I said, this is a really easy process. Take your corn kernels. This lid is crucial. Something in there. See, the ratio of oil you want, you want your kernels swimming a little bit in oil. You don't want them drowning, but you want them nice and lubricated and wet. Keep your burner on high. This cover is absolutely crucial. We're not making a sitcom here like television. We're actually making popcorn, so we don't want it flying out all over the place like you see on TV. You're going to leave this on high. Again, do not leave it. Takes a couple of seconds. It's not very long, though. Once it starts popping, though, it doesn't take long. So, do, 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 do. You know, you can sit here and do a little dance here. Here we go. As soon as you hear the first pop, hold the top. This is hot one. This is hot. And start shaking your pan. You'll hear it. It'll take off before. Here it goes. Here. So if you keep shaking it, it shakes. You do it until you hear it stop popping. At that point, shut your heat off, take your pan off, tilt the pan a little bit just to let the steam out so your popcorn doesn't get soggy. Okay? The reason for shaking this is it keeps all the unpopped kernels on the bottom of the pan and it keeps the popcorn moving so it doesn't burn. Oh God, that smells so good. When was the last time you made fresh homemade popcorn? Some of you probably never. But you will now, because it's delicious. Try it. You'll love it. You'll never go back to microwave popcorn again, I tell you. All right. We are going to make the caramel sauce now. This is a non-stick pan. If you have one, it's a good idea to use it. If you don't, it's not a big deal, but you're better off. Now, caramel for popcorn is generally made with brown sugar or white sugar, and butter. That's also how you make a toffee sauce as well. Instead, I'm going to use this delicious caramel sauce. Look at that. Okay, next is the really fun part. This is also the really dangerous part. You are, again, working with melted candy sugar. It's scalding hot like lava. Do not get it on your hands. If you do, you're looking at a second or third degree burn on your hands. And as I said, it's going to stick like melted cellophane. So be very careful. Now, normally to make caramel sauce, you're going to use butter and brown sugar or granulated white sugar. In this case, I wanted to amp it up to make it a little more decadent, so I took what was left over after I made the candied bacon, which is maple, brown sugar, and bacon fat instead of butter, and I'm going to use that as my caramel. It's already caramel in the pan, so what I'm going to do is just add a few more things so it's not so sticky and thick, and it'll foam up a little, and we can mix it on the popcorn. It'll mix really well. We're going to start by putting all this beautiful caramel and oil in our pan. God, that's gorgeous. So, 
As I told you, I'm going to amp this recipe up a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit of vanilla extract in there. Um, try and use actual extracts because vanilla otherwise is not extracts. It's just flavor. And it's artificial flavor. As I said, I also amped it up for the kids. And I put a little bit of strawberry extract in there too. I know it doesn't sound right, but it made a big difference and you barely tasted it. Just a couple drops. Or if you like, um, go ahead and put rum extract or orange extract or no extract. Just a little vanilla, whatever you like. This is important. Keep your heat on low. This is hot candy sugar and it will burn very, very fast, very, very quickly. If it does, this is ruined and you'll have to start your caramel sauce all over again. And if you don't have the bacon fat, it's going to be a problem. Well, it's not going to be a problem. You just make it with butter, but trust me. Keep it on a low heat. Just keep stirring it. Just keep stirring it. Resist the temptation to put your finger in it because you will not like that. I'm telling you. At this point, I'm putting also a little bit of non-dairy creamer in it. Caramel usually has milk in it, but we want it to be shelf-stable, so we're going to put this in it. It'll give it the same effect and the same emulsifier as the milk does, and it'll keep the caramel corn stable. Just maybe about a couple of teaspoons, not much. Just about like that. That's all you need. You don't need a lot. Keep your stirring. Keep stirring. See, it lightens up your caramel already. And as it heats up, it'll as it heats up, it'll mix up, so you won't see this white powdery grainy business going on here. But it looks so good. Yeah. You know, I was thinking. Take that candy bacon and for you guys that really love that candy bacon, make some of that up and we'll make some big beans with it. Imagine that. Wow, big beans with candy bacon in it. Yeah, buddy. Again, this step you can totally leave out. But I did it just for the kids because I was bringing it over to a picnic for my grandkids and little kids like red and Pop Mark likes red too, so I thought that'd be cool if I made red caramel corn. So I put some of this red gel in here. It's starting to boil now. I don't know if you can see that. There. And all around the edges here. See it? It's starting to boil and it's starting to foam. So we we'll keep mixing this up so we mix our red food coloring in there. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like blood, but when it hits the white popcorn, it looks really cool. Alright, this is just about ready, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, once you see it all mixed and boiling like this, you're going to put about maybe a tablespoon of cornstarch in there to thicken it up a little. Whoops. Try not to be as sloppy as I am. Make sure you stir it really well so you don't see any more white. You want it all mixed up together. No clumps. Just keep mixing it and any little clumps you get in there will um, melt and dissolve and blah, 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 blah. Okay. We're almost there. Now, normally... At this point, we're supposed to put about a teaspoon of baking soda in the mix. It makes it foam. Um, shame on me. I don't have any baking soda left, so I'm going to use baking powder. They're very, very similar, but they're not the same, but I'm going to see if it'll work. Hopefully, it will work. So we're going to put about, just about a teaspoon, about a tablespoon in there. If you put too much, it'll make it salty. And we don't want that. Mix it. Yeah, it's working beautiful. So there, now we know you can use baking soda or baking powder when making your caramel corn. See how it's getting all creamy and beautiful? 
It's gorgeous consistency. There. That's all mixed up, and the only thing left is to add our candied bacon. Chop that into little tiny pieces. So you're going to throw it in the oven on a middle rack on um, about 3, 325. And you're going to check it periodically about every 5 or 10 minutes. You don't have to open the door if you have a light like I do. But opening lets out the heat. But you want to keep a very close eye on it because, as I said, sugar burns very quickly. And that will ruin all your hard work. It just burns. So keep a very close eye on it. After about 5, 10 minutes, we're going to turn it. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so now we're going to turn our caramel corn over. Take it out of the oven. Okay, um, it's only been a little under five minutes, but it's time to turn it one more time. Look at that. Oh my god, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, you just smell it. Oh my god, I know I keep saying that, but... Teasing you, aren't I? Ha <laughs> ha! I guess you're just going to have to make some of this to find out how yummy it is and how good it smells. It looks delicious, too. I can't wait. Oh. They like said you can leave any of the stuff out of here if you don't want the food coloring. That's fine. If you don't want the strawberry flavoring, that's fine, too. If you want to leave out the bacon and the uh, honey nut cereal O's, that works, too. It's up to you. You make it whatever way you like, as long as you make your caramel the same way. And again, you don't have to use bacon fat like I did, but it's just an added extra decadence I'd like to add to it. That is really hot. Don't do what I just did. Okay. We're going to put this back in. Um, probably maybe another four minutes. Next time, we'll take it out of the oven. I'm going to give it about four more minutes. All right. It is that time. That time. It is time to take this beauty out of the oven and let it cool. Got the burner off. Thank God, because it's summer. I find it here. I like to take these pans. To use this pan to let it cool. Just scoop it up. It's still kind of wet and sticky, but as it cools off and it dries, it's going to crisp right up. Just don't let it sit in a pile. You still want to keep it nice and still let it sit in a pile. You still want to keep it nice and flat until it dries and hardens. Again, don't get it on your fingers. I mean, sooner or later you're going to do that just once, and you'll know what I'm talking about, and you'll never do it again, but trying to keep you from getting burned, so this thing's for me. God, this looks so good. Can't wait to eat them. Yummy. I ate some off the spatula before, and it cooled, and it was amazing. This is that. Don't do this at home, because this is crazy hot. And I'm a cook and a baker, so my fingers are kind of used to the heat. Most people are there. I'm spread it out real far. Now I have a gas stove here, so I'm not going to leave it on the burner because the heat will just keep coming up and I don't want it to burn. I'm going to set it on the counter over here. And we're done. Next time on Papa Mark's Place, we're going to make these delicious fried chicken breast tenders. Yummy. Can't wait. See you then. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Papa Mark's world famous candy, maple, bacon, caramel corn. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you have as much fun making it as I did. Like I said, I know it's a lot of work. But it's well worth it. And who in your family is not worth doing a little work for anyways? So, I hope you try it. I hope you enjoy it. And you have a great day. Peace out.